بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد دعوة اهل السنة the propagation of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is based, as Shaykhana Rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, and he said in a very, very famous lecture of his about, uh, called Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, Shaykh uh, Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah yarhamahu, he said, Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, Da'watun. مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ إِلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَى سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said that the da'wah of Ahl sunnah the propagation of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, is from the Qur'an to the Qur'an. And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that's why I wanted to mention a very important hadith about the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah and the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, meaning the methodology. How do we propagate Islam? What should we begin with first? And it's the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, Kuntu radif al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. على همار فقال لي يا معاذ أتدري ما حق الله على عبادي وما حق عبادي على الله قلت والله ورسوله أعلم قال حق حق الله على عبادي أن يعبدوه ولا تشركوا به شيئا وحق عبادي على الله لا يعذب من لا يشرك به شيئا قلت يا رسول الله أَفَلَا أُبَشِرَ النَّاسِ قَالَ لَا تُبَشِّرْهُمْ فَيَأْتَقِلُوا أَخْرَجَاهُ In this hadith that was collected in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, I was with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we were riding on a donkey. And look at, look at the humbleness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He could have been riding... Uh, on, on, you know, could have possibly had a horse, could have had camels, could have had all kind of things, but out of his humbleness, tawadah, they were on a donkey. So he was on a donkey with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah over his servants? and the right of the servants over Allah. And then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah and His Messenger know best. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying, the right of Allah over His slaves is that they worship Him and Him alone. And the right of the slave over Allah is that he does not punish them if they worship him and him alone. And then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, should I tell the people? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't tell them because then they would rely, they would become dependent upon that. Meaning they would, they would say, hey, they would, they, they would th- suffice themselves with only being kind of limiting themselves in the ibadah. Although that's ibadah azim, that's the greatest ibadah as, the, as tawheed. So if you come, if you have that, but, but to, to, to keep them striving. And that was related in Bukhari and Muslim. And there's immense benefits from that hadith. And 
just some of the hadith, some of the benefits, as we mentioned, it shows the humbleness of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it shows that we, when we get in positions, positions of leadership or we have a little bit of money, we don't have to have the nicest of everything. Doesn't mean we should be trampish or, or, or you know, have, be dirty in our clothing or anything like this. No. But it, we don't have to be lavish either. Take a middle path. Even if you have all the, the, the wealth to do that, you don't have to have the nicest of this, the nicest car, the nicest this, and especially if you're doing it to show off. Because the one who's much better than you, the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, was riding on a donkey with Mu'adh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he's the best of mankind. So what about you? Another benefit of this hadith, it also illustrates, as the ulama say, Kitman, or or to uh, to hold back some knowledge. Sometimes it, it may be not appropriate to, uh, in particular circumstances and situations, to give all the knowledge about certain issues. Maybe there are certain issues that are not befitting for the people to get into in their in that particular society at this time or what what or whatever the situation is that it shows us that times for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the maslaha of the community the the benefit of the community that you're dealing with that it may be necessary to reserve some aspects of knowledge some particular uh, issues another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. It shows us that we, our call is to Tawheed, because that's what Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala was ordered to do when he was sent to Yemen by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In another hadith, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, إِنَّ كَتَأْتِي كَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ فَيُكُنْ أَوْلَ مَا تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَرَةً لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ وَأَنْ يُوَحِدَ اللَّهَ أو أَنْ يُوَحِدَ اللَّهَ so, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu he was sending Mu'adh to Yemen, to the people of Yemen, because at that time the people of Yemen were primarily Jews and Christians during the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu So, Mu'adh was being sent to them. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, in the min ahli kitab, you're going to a people who are people of the book. So the first thing you should call them to is to worship Allah and Allah alone, to have Tawheed. Showing us the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is to Tawheed. Because you'll find that even in the Muslim communities, in the Muslim countries everywhere, the people are very much in the need to the call back to Tawheed. That many of the people have left Tawheed. That their shirk you'll find in many of the Muslim lands, if not all. You'll find some aspect of shirk or people trying to practice shirk. And they say, So that shows us it, it, it's a very serious thing and that the call to Tawheed is ever, is constant. That we should call to Tawheed and we call to other things in that community which they need. But the beginning of the call is to Tawheed. And we should never abandon the call, call to Tawheed. C- continue that. That's the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. Calling the people to worship Allah alone. Helping them to purify their ibadah. Teaching them how to worship Allah alone with the fiqh. The jurisprudence. And teaching them the manners. The manners of Ahl Sunnah. The manners of the, that the Prophet Sallallahu exhibited. The manners that are exhibited, that are, uh, that are called to in the Quran. In the authentic Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's also a part of it. Saluk and Adab. All of those things are from the Minhaj Rabbaniyun. You know, that's the Minhaj of the, the righteous scholars. Those people who begin with the small issues and then teach the people the bigger issues. That's their menhaj, that's their methodology. Because that was the messenger, that was a mes- message and the menhaj or methodology of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He started with Tawheed with his Sahaba, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'in, getting them strong in Iman. Even before, before the other aspects, before the prayer, before the uh, Salat of Jama'ah was implemented, before all of those other aspects in the Sharia and uh, other aspects of the Sharia were being implemented, it came in stages. The Quran was revealed in stages. And it all began with Tawheed. 
It all began with Tawheed. All of those ayats that we mentioned, all those ayats in the Quran being revealed, and worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him. And we've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. All of those ayats and verses are there for us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And they are our minhaj, our methodology. They are the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. And that is what Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu did and was, call, was, was told to do by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be adhere to that minhaj the minhaj of Ahl sunnah and may Allah forgive us of our many sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with good and forgive our evil and help us and bless us with Jannah to Firdaus. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.